welcome to the Beer Man Network. We are live in Studio A, coming your way from PA on this December 30th, 2014, the final stretch of 2014, and what a year it has been. It has been a crazy, crazy year. This is the pregame show, as we're going to be doing it straight through, though. We're beginning here. Segment one is the... Uh, the lead-in to the big soiree, which we promised would come your way at 8 p.m. tonight. One big hour talking about 2014. That's right. So tonight we will spend the whole eight to nine hour talking about the 2014 happenings. And we'll talk about everything. And that's a big, big plate of things that went down in this 2014. We've seen a lot of surprises a lot of tragic moments, and we dealt with a lot of weather issues. But tonight, we sit back in the beginning here and just welcome you in. It's been a little bit of time, and I'll tell you what, we're making changes, as you can see tonight by my wardrobe, that uh, things are already happening. Changes are coming in 2015 here at the Beer Man Network, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I have in store. As uh, you can see now, I use the studio mic, that's right, to bring you the broadcast. And over on WNJC 1360 AM on the Beer Man Live Show, I was bringing you a different approach to it all. Some nights we'd be here in the studio and other nights we'd be at the station in WNJC 1360 studio. So here we are, and we are planning a big 2015, like I mentioned. 2014 brought us a year of opportunity, and lots of great opportunities came my way to be able to do things in a new way. Now, a lot of you folks out there are newer listeners or watchers. And the new crowd, you all found out what it was like when the beer man hit the radio. Because back in 2007, I did my first radio show at WNJC 1360. And boy, oh boy, did we go a lots of places. Well, here in 2014, we didn't go a lots of places. We had two central zones, in studio at 1360 and in studio here in Pennsylvania. So we did it a little different. It wasn't a, well, let's put it this way. It wasn't as long as originally planned to go, okay? So we pulled the plug on that baby pretty quick. But you know what? I learned a lot from it. And let me share this with you tonight. What I learned doing that show was off the charts. I mean, honestly, I've learned lots of, and lots and lots of things about the whole business in 2014. What I learned was, is that when you come out to put a show on, you come out swinging for the fences. You don't go out there laid back. You've got to go out there and you've got to just swing for the fences. If you go out there and you say, oh, here I am, Rod, I'm just going to go live with a microphone, and what I'm going to talk about tonight could be something like tragedy, which we had to talk about a lot of tragedy on the radio show. Then we talked about things like football, which me and my main man, Dean Graziani, did on 1360. And tonight, my plan is to give out some awards. Most valuable player, most valuable cooler, and a few more in the bag of tricks. So, at 8 o'clock tonight, you want to be here. Or, if you're watching this through the power of archives, you'll be able to just sit back, relax, and keep watching. Because we're going to get to it all. We've got an action-packed hour, 8 p.m. coming your way tonight. And if, like I said, if you're on the archive using this new technology, something at Channel 7, we never had the opportunity to re-air the broadcast. You know, that's the one thing back in 1992. The shows were taped on VHS. Well, let me tell you, over the years, the VHS tapes were destroyed. 
I, you know, wish I had them, but unfortunately I don't. It's just part of life, you know? There's a lot of people out here that would agree with me on the fact I wish I had the opportunity to go back and do things differently. And you know what? The one thing I will honestly tell you is that on the radio station, 1360 AM, I just learned. It was a learning experience. And, you know, I had more success doing that Internet show, which we're doing right now. I had more success in 2014 bringing you the Kim Douglas interview where she announced to the world that she was engaged. That's right. Kim Douglas confirmed on these airwaves in 2014 that she was engaged. You know, we broke some stories here, you know. It was a great 2014 for me personally. Now, you know, I did a lot in 2014. You know, and 2013 honestly was a really bad year. So 2014, I turned the page and I started to live with things, you know. Sometimes you don't have a perfect situation. Sometimes you're battling something. Well, you know, I still am in the process of recovery, but I'll never be 100% again. But you know what? You learn to make the adjustments to live your daily life, but you're in pain. And people around you don't realize you're in that pain. They don't know what it's like when you wake up out of bed in the morning and your back is completely on fire. It's happened just a few days ago. I woke up out of bed in the morning and my back is on fire. So let me tell you, you got to be strong, you got to be tough, and you got to take on every obstacle this road will throw to you. And let me tell you, folks, there's a lot of obstacles out here. There's a lot of people that have a lot of negative things to say, and some of it is rightly deserved. On the other side of the coin, sometimes people forget the human side. You know, I wish people would get a better look at the human side of life, because I've seen a lot of things in the industry that I'm in. I'm watching people get their pink slips every week that goes by. And you know what? It's tough to watch it because they're good people losing their jobs. It's sad. It's just part of the world we live in. It's sad. And you know what? It's just, I can't even put it into a word for you. It's just a disgrace. How's that sound? We'll just try our best. We'll say it's a disgrace what's happening. And there's not a damn thing we can do about it, you know? If you try to fight, you'll turn out to be somebody with nothing. You'll wind up with pennies in your hand. You'll be on the street begging for food. It's just not worth fighting the way things are. But the one thing in 2015 I plan on doing is bringing you the Beer Man Network full Speed ahead, full throttle. That's right. We're going to bring it to you. We're going to be on the air again like we used to be. You're going to have more opportunities. You're going to get a chance to win prizes. You're going to get a chance to call in on the phone lines again using our friends at TalkShoe.com. Or you're going to be introduced to more technology as you're going to get the chance to learn how to download Skype if you don't have Skype already and be able to call in through Skype. We're going to use more of technology in 2015. And we're going to introduce you to new talent. One of the things the radio show on 1360 did was give me the opportunity to introduce you to new talent. Dean Graziani, Jessica Reed. You know, Steve, the Steve Show. We introduced you to him as part of our show. We bought you the Reverend Bob Levy, who now the, continues to do mornings on 1360 AM. You can tune in, Rising with the Rev, every Monday through Friday, 4.30 AM to 6.30. That's right, Rising with the Reverend Bob Levy comes your way on WNJC 1360 a.m. every Monday through Friday, 4.30 to 6.30 a.m. Give him a shot, okay? Take a listen. He's a pretty funny guy. Reverend Bob Levy's a comedian who's well-established. He's been in the business for years. So it's your opportunity to tune in to the Rising with the Rev. That's right. So, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's something that I've been working hard. Uh, you know, I had the phone like this, seriously. I had the phone glued to my ear 
working different people to make the deal happen with the Reverend Bob Levy. I mean, literally, I was like this constantly. Phone in hand, working the line till we got the deal done. I was also working on a lot of things that never became fruition, and that's sad because some of the things that I was working on would have been huge, but unfortunately, certain people weren't willing to take the shot and write the check to make those things happen. You know, it's sad that we have to go beg for money. And you know, the generosity out there hasn't been at the level we wished it would be from you, the general public. We needed more help. But one person stepped up and donated a few bucks. And that one person tonight will take home an award. There's no doubt about it. That person has already won an award. And you'll find out later on in the big hour who that person is as he will win one of the 2014 awards that I will be giving tonight. That's right, tonight. Here on the broadcast, it is back. The Philly Beer Man is back. The Beer Man Network is back to wrap up 2014. And you know what? There's no booze in front of me tonight, you know? I thought about it, and I said to myself, you know what? The people don't want the drunken beer man. They don't want it. And if you want it, here's how you give me some feedback. Email address is beerman, B-E-E-R-M-A-N, at beermannet.com. That's beerman at beermannet.com. B-E-E-R-M-A-N at B-E-E-R-M-A-N-N-E-T dot com. Simple as that. So send me an email. I love hearing from you, the viewer. Okay? I enjoy hearing back from you guys. I want to interact with you over at Channel 7 back in 92 and all the way through 95. I interact with my audience, which was a great, great time. You know, in today's world, the interaction has kind of died. Even on NowLive.com in 2008 and 2009, the interaction was off the charts. You know, I miss those days. And here we are now getting ready to go to 2015. You know, sometimes the interaction has to be created by going out amongst the masses. I've gone to Times Square in New York. Not once, but three or four times I've gone to Times Square, New York. There's a video up on YouTube called Beer Man Takes Manhattan. You'll see me interviewing a guy from Spain. That's right, Spain. That's right, all the way from Spain, I interviewed this guy in Times Square, New York. You know, I've done a lot of interviews over the years. Molly Eichel was a great interview. Philadelphia Daily News columnist. She has her own column in the Philly Daily News. She's a great, great, great talent. You know, and that was an enjoyable interview. We wrapped up the show by airing that interview on 1360 AM WNJC. So, here we are moving past WNJC. But, you know, when I refer to it, it was a place that gave me an opportunity to learn some more. And now, back here in Studio A in Pennsylvania, we're back. But you know what? We want to take it to the next level. In 2015, the goal is to bring you from a brand new studio location. So the excitement begins to build as the countdown to our new studio, which will debut later in 2015. And also, the opportunity to bring you more live broadcasts from Orlando, Florida. I put one up at the Beer Man Network page on Facebook. There's some videos still there, so go check them out. That's facebook.com forward slash Beer Man Network. And you know, spread the word. Tell your friends that we're here. We're going to be here once again every week for one hour with a broadcast live. And Scott Mattisau will be back with me. Dean Graziani will rejoin us. 
Jessica Reed will reappear. That's right. Jessica Reed is coming back in 2015. And brand new talent will always be sought after. We will look to bring in top talents from the Philadelphia area. When I see someone who I feel can make it happen and come on these airwaves, I will bring them to you. I'm not just a guy. I'm a guy with a plan. I'm an entrepreneur, baby. And I'm a talk show host, too. And I love call-in talk. And I want to see it come back in a big way in 2015. Hell, take me serious now because, yes, I'm dressed for the occasion tonight. So I don't want to be taken lately anymore. I want you to start taking me serious. I want you to say, damn, the beer man's here. He's not playing around no more. This guy means business. He took the time to, to do the research, and he finally made it happen. He's finally taken this thing to a level that we thought would never, ever happen. Well, that's what I'm trying to do here as we wrap up 2014. Tonight, we're playing on a big show, and we hope you'll get a chance to see it. We hope you'll be able to listen to all this tonight. But this is the pregame right now. That's right. We're still in the pregame mode. We've got the big show coming up 8 p.m. East Coast time. We ring the bell and we say, welcome in to the final broadcast of 2014 as we're pregaming it. You know what you do when you pregame it? You tailgate, you hang out. No booze tonight, though, folks. No booze tonight at all. That's the way to do it, right? So there's no drinking here. It's your buddy, the beer man here. I've told you about the show, and hopefully you're checking it out at your convenience, you know? I want you to be uh, able to uh, sit back and enjoy and have it at your way, you know? A lot of people out there really need it their way, you know? So that's fine with me. You know, I'm a pretty, pretty straight-up guy, and my approach towards things are flat out that, you know, Things need to happen, you know? Things need to happen. Bottom line, folks, bottom line, I want things to happen, you know? I'm not a patient dude. I'll tell you that right now. I don't have a lot of patience. I'm a straight shooter. I'm not going to lie to you, you know? I'm not going to lie to you. So I want you to be able to take me serious. I want you to say, you know what? The beer man comes on here. He does his thing. He's not sitting here lying to me. He's a straight shooter. This guy tells it like it is. He's not scared to be that guy. You know, he needs to be a leader. And that's what I do. I'm a leader. I'm not a follower. I'm a leader, folks. Okay? And that's the bottom line. I'm a leader. I'm not a follower. Okay? So let's get that straight. I'm telling you. That what we're trying to do in 2015 is build something for you to enjoy. You know, and you can see how I take it. You know, I believe facial hair should be part of the game. Many lawyers, many doctors have a beard, okay? You know, so that's that. I do things the way I believe I should do it. And, you know, that's an old saying. Did it my way, you know? Frank Sinatra always sings it. I did it my way. Or he did sing it, of course, Frank Sinatra is long gone. But you get my drift. You get my drift. We're not going to play that game tonight. We're just going to be here. We're going to do it. And that's that, you know. And we hope that you like it. We hope that you spend the time and you enjoy what we're producing here tonight for you. And uh, that's that. So, you know, Christmas is wrapped up. Panic is wrapped up. We're heading into a new year. Excitement is building. And everybody should be happy right now. Everybody should be in a great mood. We're starting fresh. We're getting that new start. Lots of new things coming for the new year. And uh, you know what? If 2014 was bad for you, why don't forget about it? You know what they say? Forget about it. You know? So that's that. I mean, let's, let's be honest with one another. That 2014 might have been bad for a lot of people. I don't know. For me, my list is coming up at 8 o'clock when I tell you what, what I feel was the uh, the highlights and the lowlights of the year and recap the year and, you know, tell you what I think is going to happen in 2015. And I'm going to talk about some things you're probably going to say to yourself, all right, what's he going down this road for? But we have to do it. We have to prepare you for what 2015 will bring you. 2015 is not going to exactly be the year 
that some people want it to be, okay? It's not going to be the year that some people really want it to be. I can tell you that right now. 2015 is going to have its obstacles. It's going to have its good times and its bad times. And you know what? You got to look at it this way. Bottom line is, what you need to do in 2015 is come out to make a difference, okay? Make a difference with your life. Make a difference with everybody you know's life. And be a leader in 2015. Don't be a follower. Be a leader. You know, I watch a lot of these TV shows, okay? I watch Mike Francesa do radio on television, you know? And that's what I guess I'm trying to do here tonight is a little radio on television. So, yeah. Bottom line is, hey, you know what? 2015 might be the year I finally say, you know what? I'm done with this. I don't do it no more. I don't know what it's going to bring. I honestly can't tell you what 2015 is going to bring. You know, I don't know. I really don't know, you know, and that's the thing. But you know what? The bottom line is this. So here I am with the headphones doing the whole radio thing, you know. As I listen back to everything, because that's what you have to do. You have to listen back to yourself. You know, any great radio pro will sit here and do that, so. But, uh, I'm trying to do a TV show at the same time, so I'm doing, like, radio and television here, all in one bundle, okay? But, you know, I try to teach radio to a couple people that never done it before. You know, I actually enjoy teaching how to do a radio show to people who never done it before. That's the thing. I really try to teach Dean Graziani and Jessica Reed how to do a radio show. And that's why those hours that we did together as a team was exciting for me. It was fun. It was a lot of teaching, in, you know, and we were playing it on the fly. As we went, I was teaching them, hey, stay closer to the microphone. Hey, uh, you know, don't do this. Hey, don't do that. You know, but I gave you the opportunity to hear that as it all unfolded. Some people described it as a train wreck. You know what I described it as? I was showing people how to handle themselves, the radio professional. And I received a lot of great comments from people about the job I did. You know, and I'm proud of it. I'm not going to sit here and say to you that I feel like I can't do this. I know I can do it. This is my passion. And everybody out there has something they're passionate about that they can share with other people. They can groom other people over time. And I'm not saying I'm the best in the business. I'm not even saying that I'm Joe Pro yet. But what I'm saying is I can do it. You know, a lot of people can't sit here and look at this camera and just keep on going. A lot of people would freeze up. A lot of people would say, mm, what's next? You know, there was times on the radio where, you know, I had to go on the fly and put on music. Because I didn't know what was next, okay? I'm not going to lie to you. But what I'm going to tell you is, is that when you put together a show, you have to come with plenty of things to talk about and you know looking back at 2014 as a whole which is tonight's main topic there were lots of things that i seen happening that will make me believe that in 2015 we're gonna hit a bump spot the stock market is going crazy now all the experts on tv keep saying oh well you know the number five is lucky it don't worry about it let me tell you something what are people going to do if they can't afford to go get themselves a sandwich, or they can't afford to go get themselves groceries, what are they going to do? I mean, let's face it, there is a lot of problems that could happen in 2015, and it will happen to at least 10% of the population. 10% of the population that currently are able to eat will not be able to afford it anymore. You know, things happen in life. I read a story recently. Tragic story. Rockin' Rob Lentz. He had a disaster at his house. His fi a fire burned his house down. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I put it out there on our page. I asked you guys to step up and donate. I didn't care if you donated $5 or you donated $100, whatever you could afford. But you know what? Helping uh, one another out is what it's all about for our world here. Let's help one another out because guess what? One day you're a millionaire and the next day you got nothing. I'm telling you, it could happen. 
one day you're on top of the ladder and the next day you fall right down and it's a hard fall and you're struggling and you don't know what to do well i can tell you right now if you keep yourself in a respectable place people will come up and help you okay look i'm not exactly a wealthy guy hell i'm broadcasting this show from equipment that's pretty cheap equipment you know what i'm saying we're not using state-of-the-art things here this isn't wnjc radio anymore you know what we're doing is we're using what i have to put on a broadcast and i think it looks damn good considering what we have to use here so you know that's my personal view and you know what i put it out there as a product that i want you to take a look at you to listen to and at the end of the day, you could either say, you know what, I'm going to support what this guy's doing, or you know what, the hell with it. I'm not going to care about this guy. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there that I understand that at 730 on, on a Tuesday night here, New Year's Eve tomorrow night, okay, people are busy. But, you know, there was a lot of people also that supported what we did. And this is going to be the ultimate test for me, honestly. What happens tonight is really going to judge the future of everything. But, you know, a lot of people tell me, don't look at the live numbers. When I was on the radio, I couldn't tell you how many people were listening. Here, I get I get a viewer count, so I know if there's people tuned in. Okay? So then there's also the archives, which people will check out at their own their own schedule. You know, like people don't have the ability to be here right now live. But they will be here at a later point. So that's where we get those numbers from. And the numbers are critical to what the future holds. Do we go ahead and use the resources to try to get more people aware of this broadcast? That's the question I need to make, or the question I need to answer in 2015. It's not that I have to make the question. I don't know where the hell that came from. See, sometimes I show you my weaknesses as a host, that on the fly I come up with some sayings and people scratch their head and go, what the hell is this guy talking about? And you know the funny thing is we're uncensored here. So, you know, I could sit here and say, what the fuck is this guy talking about? And there's nobody from the FCC going to give a rat's ass. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes you've got to be real about it. People told me be myself. So I'm coming out here tonight doing my thing with the microphone, and I'm being myself. I'm not acting tonight, okay? I'm being myself. I'm doing my type of broadcast. And you know what? Maybe that will help grow it. People are going to say, you know what? This guy is doing his own damn thing. He's not worried about trying to please the masses. He's out of here putting on his broadcast and letting people find it. And sometimes the numbers come back really disappointing. But then there's other times where you're like, wow, you know what? Numbers look good. I remember being on WNJC getting phone call after phone call, and I was feeling really good about things. In the middle of the night, the phones were ringing consistently. So, you know what? Bottom line is, when those, when those phone lines are ringing cons like that, you're definitely a happy camper. It makes you a much happier person when the phone lines are ringing off the hook. So, you know, that's that. I mean, look, I've got a lot of visions, okay? I'm a guy with a vision, and everybody knows that by now. Everybody that's listened to me, everybody that's watched my shows knows that I'm a guy with a vision. And hopefully 2015, I, I nail it to a T. I get my vision accomplished, and we're doing things. You know, and the thing I notice is we need to be out with the people more often. Because me sitting here, people are going to say to themselves, what the hell want to listen to that guy for? But if they see me out with a bunch of people in a wild party scene, they're like, you know what? I want to see that. Just like today, went to Redbox and rented two movies, Expendables 3, which was great, and Sex Tape. Now, let's face it, everybody... Well, every male probably won't see sex tape because I hear there's a lot of porn, porn material in there. That's what I hear. Now, you know, I don't know. I haven't watched it yet. I'm going to watch it when I'm done the show at 9 o'clock tonight. So there you go. Here's my schedule. See that? You know what, you know what I'm going to be doing after I sign off here tonight. So I've got a deadline to be off the air by 9. We might be off the air at 8.30. We might be off the air at 9. Let's see what happens. You know what I'm saying? We're going to keep it going as long as I feel like we've got something really good going. You know? And when you get that back-to-back -back conversation going, 
like in the past with Scott Madison or Steve or whoever it is, you don't want to get off the air. Here we are in a different situation now. Now it's like, you know what? Now what I should have done, of course, is book a guest, you know? And that's the thing, though. How many times are you going to rely on another person to do your show? If you want to be the show host, you need to come out there and do your show. You need to be able to come out there and say, you know what, there's lots to talk about, including the NFL, which let's dive into that right now. Because the way it played out this season, the Philadelphia Eagles were well on their way to an easy playoff spot. Well, guess what? Everything went straight to hell. Eagles lost all those games. They lost to Dallas and Philadelphia. Then they lost to uh, Seattle and Philly. And then they lost to Washington down in Washington. Season's over. They finished 10 and 6. A disaster of a year. Now, Chip Kelly definitely needs one more year. Next year, Chip Kelly better produce because if Chip Kelly and the Eagles don't produce next year, I think you need to consider saying, you know what? You've had three years now, Chip. Maybe he needs to answer for it next year. If they don't go deep into the playoffs next year, I think Chip Kelly needs to be on the hot seat. Look at Rex Ryan. He had plenty of time with the Jets, but he also got the two AFC championship games. So Chip Kelly needs to be held accountable. And the Eagles need to do a better job of picking up better talent in the draft or through free agency or maybe even a trade. You might have to give up a lot. You might have to rebuild this thing, but I'm all for it. I'm saying get rid of Nick Foles, let Sanchez walk, and go out. And in that trade for Foles, get yourself a draft pick that is worth getting you a starting quarterback. I say let's rebuild it. Other people say Nick Foles is the answer. I say Nick Foles isn't the answer. Against the Saints last year, Nick Foles wasn't able to win that game. Now, you know, everybody's got their own opinion on that subject. My opinion, of course, this year, get rid of Nick Foles. Bring in a new quarterback and see where that takes you. Make the changes that need to be made. Will the Eagles do it? I don't know. I can't tell you what they're going to do, to be honest with you, but I do have an opinion. What I would do, same thing with the Phillies. Cole Hamels needs to be traded immediately, but they're going to sit there and play this game. They should have traded him when they had the opportunity, when they were getting offers for him. Now the, the offers probably aren't as good because teams know the Phillies have to trade Cole Hamels. And look at Ryan Howard. The Phillies come out, their front office says, oh, we need to get rid of Ryan Howard. So guess what? Every GM in baseball is like, okay, we're not taking him off your hands and release the guy. That's how we're going to get rid of him. We're going to have to eat the whole damn contract. Every single cent of Ryan Howard's contract is going to have to be paid to get rid of this guy. He's bad news for the team, but at the end of the day, you move the team forward. And you know what? you got to pay him if he's here, if he's not here, so what the hell. Just go ahead and just get rid of this guy because he's really a problem for the Phillies moving forward. You know, and the Phillies need to spend the money in other areas too, not just buying out Howard's contract. They need to go out there and say, hey, A.J. Burnett saved us all this money. Go out and spend it. Not signing Rondi Rodriguez to a minor league contract. Come on, Philly, stop being cheap. You know, I've seen some general managers rebuild their team in one year. Miami Marlins come to mind. They've done it many times. One year they suck, the next year they're back winning the World Championship. It's all about the moves you make, who you sign, who you trade for. You've got to be more aggressive about doing something. Phillies weren't, though, and that's a sad state of affairs. As in 2014, the Philadelphia Phillies were just horrible. Cliff Lee injured and whatnot. So, look, bottom line is, it's not good. It's not good at all, my friends. But, hey. What are we going to do? You know, it's a sad state of affairs, and we can't do a damn thing about it. So, I just want to check something here real quick. Let's make sure this is a, let's just say there's a little bit of a delay. Before we get up on 8 o'clock, I'll make sure everything works perfect. Okay. All right, I think it's good to go. Let me see something. I don't know if I had it in the right spot. Oh, well. You know what? I don't care. I'm showing you. I'm showing you right now. Look at that. I hooked the microphone. So. Watch out. Let me see how it sounds now. Oh, 
Wow. So, you know, we don't need a microphone. I try to make it look good, you know, but we're in a studio here, so what's the matter? It actually sounds the same, so. I don't know. But, hey, we're doing a year review show tonight, so. See that? Sometimes we'll do things just to be funny on the fly, you know? Who cares? Like, we're not here, like, playing to 100,000 people. Why not? Like, you know, I never understood that. Like, why people won't let me be who I want to be. These things on, on the Internet were always meant to be more laid back. And you know what? Just like, hmm, whatever. You know, and that's the thing. I talked to Scott Mattis all the other day, and he told me, dude, just be yourself, man. Stop trying to play to the masses. You know, just sit back, be yourself, and everything will be good, you know? So that's that. We're going to do that. You know, I'm going to be myself. And in 13 minutes, I promised, like I said, 8 o'clock straight up, we're going to do that. We're going to talk about uh, everything here, and that's that, so... You know, a lot of people are complaining how bad their Comcast is, and uh, I already got files. I've had files for the longest time, so there you go. Why would I want Comcast? That was just, uh, you know, forced into Comcast for many years. You know, it's funny. It's quiet as a church mouse out there tonight, so. But anyway, I like to have this tradition where I do the uh, the New Year stuff, you know. So, you know what's funny? I just found that really funny. It says seven people saw this post but 13 views. Okay, well, if seven saw the post but there's 13 views, okay, I think I know why. I don't know. Facebook's changing everything, too. Everybody's changing everything, you know what I'm saying? And I put that I'll be scheduling a weekly show. So then I had it up there to tonight, 8 o'clock. So, you know, we still got a few more minutes here. Maybe people start coming in. I don't know. I'm not a uh, mind reader when it comes to that. But you know what? It's like, eh, whatever. So, as we are here on the pregame show, it's the pregame to the year in review show. And, uh, yes, indeedy, I will be reviewing the 2014 year. We'll start, of course, with... First quarter, then we'll go to second quarter, third quarter, and final quarter of the year. So we'll do it in quarters as we uh, talk about the things that happened. Then, of course, we'll have the different topics. Like we'll discuss the people who died in 2014. They were the surprises. You know, if somebody would have told you beginning of 2014 that some of the people who died are going to die, you'd be like, yeah, right, dude, get out of here. Get out of here. You're like such a liar, dude. Well, guess what? 2014 was a year full of surprises. We had a couple uh, last-minute additions to the list of people who died. And, uh, you know, it, it was a bad year for deaths. And, you know, some people like uh, Mickey Rooney. You know, Mickey Rooney was a guy that's 93 years old, okay? I mean, seriously. David Brenner was 77 years old. You know, these guys, they lived their life. You know, it's like, hey, these guys lived a good life, you know. They might have had some problems at the end, but they lived a long life, you know. How about these people who were in their 30s and their 40s? And the story of a two-year-old baby girl that died the other day, you know. Those are the things that get me angry when people say, Oh, you know, somebody that lived to 85 or 90 was like, oh, you know, died too soon. No, 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 they didn't die too soon. They lived a long life, you know. When you go to a funeral for somebody and they're in their 30s, 40s, 50s, even 60s, and I did go to one this year. So, uh, you know, yeah, you know, it, it's just, hey, you know, it's, it, it's weird because, um, some of the things here in the apartment were, were actually um, from uh, my wife's uncle who passed away. Actually, this table I'm using here is, is the chair I'm on right now is, is from um, him. So, you know, from his estate, I guess you'll say. But, um, you know, 2014 was a year where, you know, things happened, unfortunately. You know, it's like any other year. Things happen all the time, folks, you know. I mean... Uh, 
Thing is, I'm 38 years old, you know, and I hope I get to see at least 50. You know, I mean, in today's world, you never know. You know, there's a lot of uh, turmoil overseas. There's all kinds of crazy stuff happening. Planes are crashing over in Asia constantly, and uh, they just found uh, the wreckage and some bodies this morning. So, you know, it's just the world we live in, you know. It's just, it's not a happy place, unfortunately. It's not a happy place at all. But it's the world we live in. So, you know what? We just have to take it as it happens. And we have to roll with the punches, you know. And it's the bottom line. I mean... You know, yeah, I guess at 38, trying to put together a company of my own is definitely an uphill battle. But I feel like the broadcasting options that are out there just aren't good enough. And I believe if done right and things worked out, we could run one hell of a broadcasting company. But will it ever come to fruition? I don't know. But you know what? The Beer Man Network's here. And it needs to be here at a much larger volume of people tuned in. And much more programming offered. Much more programming needs to be offered here on this Beer Man Network channel. And on the website and whatnot. We need to get things going. You know, it feels like the fourth quarter... And things got to start happening, you know. And 2015 really is going to be that fourth quarter to get it going, you know. And if it doesn't happen, then you know what? This could be the final stages of my broadcasting career, which some people say you don't have one anyway. Well, guess what? I do have one. It's just that I'm not turning a profit yet on it, okay? And that's how I feel about it. You're not going to change my mind on that. Because right now we're in the pregame here on the Beer Man Network. Our website, BeerManNet.com. Check it out today, all right? BeerManNet.com. You know, I think we have everything well advertised, you know? That's what gets me about this. I feel like we're well advertised, but yet the masses aren't coming in. And I know that we need to uptick the advertising in 2015. But, uh, you know, some people are really upset at me and they just don't want to come around no more, you know. They wanted to be able to crank call the radio show, and I wasn't having it. That wasn't there for them to crank call it, you know, and they wanted to say words that shouldn't have been said on the radio. And I wasn't having it, and therefore these people turned around and said, you know what, he's having too much fun, therefore we're not going to tune in no more, you know. And... In 2014, these guys were definitely back again for round two. In 2007, they used to harass the radio show. And in 2014, they made their comeback again. Just like I came back, they came back, you know. And don't get me wrong, they made things a little more interesting at times, you know. And like Scott Mattis all said, he said, dude, just let them have their fun. You know, it'll be better for you in the long run if you let them have their fun. You come off as one of these boring talk shows, and, you know, if you don't have phone calls, you know, and that's the funny thing about 2014. You know, there was times we had phone calls, there were times we had interviews, you know, and it was just, it was crazy. So who will be our first award winner of the night with five minutes left to the primetime special? You will soon find out who wins the first award, which will be the Kohler and number one asset to the broadcast. You'll find out who that winner is in just a few minutes. And you'll find out what that winner will be receiving because I will be giving away some prizes tonight. That's right, and you can claim your prize when you see me, okay? I'll have your prize, and I'll make sure you get it, and I will take a picture of you holding that prize. And I think that prize has a unique value to it, because what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you in a few minutes what I'm going to do, but uh, it's going to be unique, you know what I'm saying? So stay tuned, you know, keep hanging with us here. I know it's a long, drawn-out broadcast Almost two hours tonight, that's right, of the Beer Man Network's return. And uh, 
That's that. But you know what? This show is going to be fun for me to do because I'm going to talk about everything. But you know what? I'm a guy of my word. When I say 8 o'clock, that's when that show begins. So uh, we'll be starting with the first quarter of 2014 as we wind down the clock here. Three minutes and change to the opening bell for the main event. The Beer Man's 2014 Year in Review is coming your way in just three minutes and change. So uh, sit tight because you'll like what I have in store for you. So, uh, you know what? We're going to pause for the cause. You're going to hear a little silence for a minute while I get a, uh, a beverage. That's right, a beverage. Stand by. Back after this. Now what we're going to do is, why not? Yes, indeed, the bottle opener here. My new favorite drink, Angry Orchard. This is good stuff. So why not? Let's pop a beer because it is the New Year's Eve type special here. So everybody, toast to you all. Happy New Year to you and yours. Wish you a great and very happy 2015. Cheers. Yes. Very, very good beverage. It's actually, I see a malt liquor. Very good, though. So, it's almost time to give away that first award to open up the show. And you know what? This guy played a key role in 2014 uh you know i really did not know him before 2014 so therefore i'm gonna go ahead and give him the award that i feel is an important award he is the uh most valuable caller he is the most valuable asset to the company he uh has contributed on a great great level and uh ladies and gentlemen he is really the addition that i needed to get through 2014 on the broadcast side to keep me going when things were a little bit rough he encouraged me to keep after it he was a loyal supporter, and as we open up the 8 o'clock whistle, once it comes out, it's waiting for the 8 o'clock officially to hit the, uh, the clock here. Once we touch 8 o'clock, I will tell you who this great gentleman is who will win our first award of the evening for the best caller and most valuable asset. To the Beer Man Network, which debuted in 2014. Beer Man Network was born in 2014, folks. And uh, it is 8 o'clock, so I welcome you to the special broadcast, the Beer Man's 2014 Year in Review. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, our winner is none other than South Jersey Taper, Billy. That's right, Billy. You are the caller and the most valuable asset to the Beer Man Network. You win, and your prize is you will win an autographed Beer Man jersey. That's right. It will be the official jersey that I wore when I was selling beer at Citizens Bank Ballpark. You are the winner. It will be autographed by me, and that is your prize for being the most valuable asset slash cooler of 2014. Congratulations, South Jersey Taper Billy. You are a winner. And I thank you for everything you did for me in 2014. And uh, that prize will be coming along in the next couple of weeks. 
or maybe a couple of days whenever I see you, you will be presented with that jersey autographed by yours truly. And uh, we'll take a picture and all that good stuff so you guys can see me presenting Billy South Jersey Taper with his award. Now, let's get into it. What were the key moments of 2014? Let's go back, rewind the tape, and let's do it. The Philadelphia Eagles opened up 2014 hosting the New Orleans Saints, my first ever Eagles game as a fan, and they lost by a field goal. So what a way to open up a new year. I open it up by going to the Eagles game, watching them lose by three points to the New Orleans Saints. That right there is worth a beer. There you go. At least a slug. Now, that's January's low light. Moving on to... We move on to April. That's right, because you know the first quarter? To me, the first quarter as a whole... Why not? There was one other highlight. When the power went out for four days because of an ice storm, I was on Action News right here in Philadelphia. That's right, the 530 edition of the Action News broadcast scene, the beer man, showing everybody in the Philadelphia area his freezer. And many people said, damn, beer man, you showed them your freezer with the ice cream, the Briars ice cream. They thought that was legendary. So that's another highlight of the opening quarter of 2014. Now, we move on to April. Opening day gets rained out. So what happens? I decide I'm going all out. I dress to the nines with the suit and everything. You could see that video here, and you could also see a few more videos from that on YouTube. Well, there you go. Opening day of the Phillies game. There's the beer man. He's just macking it all out in April. It was a happy, happy day. Santa Claus hat, the whole nine yards. And, you know, it was just a great, great moment of 2014. Some other moments that I will remember. Moving along through April, the Phillies do lose that opening day game, by the way. But it was a great day anyway. So we move it on to summertime. Summer, summer, summertime. Another highlight of 2014. You know, actually, I want to say something else. I remember, yes, I do remember, the Super Bowl in New York. That's right, Super Bowl in New York City, where the Denver Broncos get destroyed by the Seattle Seahawks. Another one of those moments where your jaw dropped and said, is this really happening? I mean, really, though. So that's what the kind of year 2014 was. Now, we move back to the summertime, where I returned to Point Pleasant Beach, New Jersey, and it was a fun, fun time. Really, there wasn't that many highlights. You see, and I'm struggling to come up with these highlights of 2014. But there's more coming. The juice gets better as we go through the summertime. So I, I do my Point Pleasant thing a couple times. Now... There's another award for, this award is not an award to a person. It's the full moment of the year. The full moment of the year. It is when I'm interviewing Corrado and Victoria on Father's Day. I kept calling Corrado Cordero. Did I look like a fool or what? The full moment of the year. I was the ultimate fool sitting there interviewing a Hollywood producer. And I called the man by the wrong name the whole entire interview. Wow. What a bad, bad night I was having on Father's Day of 2014. You know, epic failure. You get your big break. Everything looks like it's going to happen. And I called the man by his wrong name. By the, the wrong name. I called him by the wrong name, not his real name. 
ultimate fail of 2014. And then we had the lighting issues and everything else that took place in 2014. But, you know, that was an ultimate fail of 2014. So then we move on, and we're now at the point where we go to September. That's right. We, the rest of the summer was kind of quiet, not many main event moments there. And we get to September. And in September, what happens there is, is that we open up again on WNJC. The whole negotiations with the Reverend Bob Levy. That went on for weeks throughout the late summer. So I was too busy working the phones, setting up meetings, trying to get sponsors lined up. I met the guy that owned Cheese Dogs. We met Nick's Roast Beef. Neither one of them opened up their wallets and helped us out. But, you know, what are you going to do? You know? So. A free plug is what they got at the end of the day, you know? Nothing benefited us. And it's sad because, you know, you're trying to get people to help you get the business off the ground. And uh, two failed meetings where nothing came out of it, you know. And maybe that's the reason right now, live, we have nobody here. Maybe it's because they wanted me to sit here and talk about 2014 like the news does. I don't do that. This is the beer man's year in review. Get it? There you go. And now you got it. Good job. So, bottom line is, Reverend Bob Levy, a highlight for my year indeed, finally agrees we're going to have a radio show. And it's rising with the Reverend Bob Levy. And it airs 4.30 a.m. to 6.30 a.m., on WNJC. It's still there. You can still hear it over there. And you can still go to RevBobLevy.com. So you can see one great friendship was made in 2014. That was the highlight was the friendship between myself and Reverend Bob Levy. We went into a partnership to bring radio to WNJC 1360. And you know what? You get two hours every Monday through Friday morning. It's a great deal, isn't it? And there you go. Great, great moment of 2014. And as the year went on, the radio show went on, I made my return to Disney World for my nephew's sixth birthday. So you know what? As you could see, as I talk about the highlights of 2014, I had a damn great year. And you know what? The fact that there's nobody here live right now isn't going to bring me down because 2014 was an awesome year. Awesome, awesome year. And I know some people are going to see this eventually. So, 2015, I plan on being a great year. You know, there's a song out there, With or Without You. And I will make it happen in 2015. But now, let's move away from me, and let's talk about the sad news of 2014. The shocking news. Robin Williams, dead. Joan Rivers, dead. Shockers of 2014. The two biggest shockers right there. Now, we have people who are contending to win the MVP award for 2014. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've had to think this over every hour of the last couple days. Who will be the MVP award winner? The contenders are Dean Graziani, Jerry Horgan, Scott Mattisall, the Reverend Bob Levy. There's four right there. Should I keep going? Anthony Colorado, Molly Eichel, those six people were contenders for the MVP award. To be an MVP, you had to put in lots and lots of energy and time to everything I did in 2014. Of course, everybody knows that the MVP is really my wife. 
But that's beyond the point. She was the most valuable player in 2014 for my life. But for the Beer Man Network, the Beer Man Network 2014 MVP, it has to go to only one person. But the contenders are there. And let's not forget everybody else who took part in the radio show in 2014. Let's not forget them. But hey, 2014 was a year that if you blinked, it went by pretty quick. It really did. And for that reason, there's not much material here. By the way, in Times Square, back in 2007, there was a guy listening to that broadcast on WNJC that aired from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. back on New Year's Eve 2007. And that man will get an honorable mention here tonight because he came back for more. You know, he came back for more of horrible broadcasting, as he called it. California Joe Benson, you win the award for the man who stood and hung around for it all. No matter what your response was, you win the loyalty award for hanging around through every terrible moment. Seriously, you have won the award, my friend. You hung around for every single moment through garbage, through things that wanted to make you throw up. You hung around with it all. You deserve credit for that, seriously. You get credit for it. What you win is an honorable mention on the 2014 year in review. California Joe Benson, congratulations. You win the loyal award. You are the most loyal person in 2014. Congratulations. There you go, folks. I mean, you know, you got to give someone credit when they do something like that. They hang around no matter what happens. You know, it takes a lot of energy and time to do that. And he did it. So, you know what? He gets the honorable mention. There you go. And, uh, you know, back in 2007, he was spitting out beer from his nose, as he said back in those days. I remember the things people say about it. You know what? And honestly, that's why I'm still here in 2014 doing this broadcast. Because I remember the things people said in the years gone by and in 2014, what they said. It might have not all been positive, but guess what? I'll agree with you. It was a lot of garbage. The Steve Show. That guy was the biggest idiot that I ever did a crossover with. Was it a huge mistake? Yeah. I mean, really, remember Will Bozart's comment? Will's like, is he here to fix my car? I mean, seriously, though. We had some highlights in 2014. We had funny moments. We laughed a lot. We lived life. We weren't crying. We were laughing a lot. Yeah, there was times we cried, but there were times where we laughed our asses off. That was what was great about 2014 is that there was plenty of time to laugh our asses off. You know what? I'm happy. I'm a happy man. 2014, now that it's pretty much done, I mean, there's only, what, maybe uh, 28 hours to go, a little less than 28 hours, 27 and change. See, I'm good at the math. I'm very good at the math. 27 and change to go in 2014. So you know what? You go out there and use the last 27 hours and change of 2014 and try to make that rememberable moment because you know what? I don't know where else to go with this one. Congratulations to Billy who won the Excuse me. <laughs> I know where to go with it. <laughs> anyway, um, you know, no, seriously though, Billy, you, you definitely deserve the award. Um, the MVP award goes to Who's it going to be? Drum roll? Mm-hmm. Who wins the 2014 MVP? I still don't know who to give it to. How about we do this, folks? The 2014 MVP award goes to... You decide. I want you to decide. Here's the choices. 
There's Jerry Horgan, great co-host for me, Jerry Horgan. He's one of the people. The other candidates for the MVP award are Scott Manisol, another great, great asset, a great friend. Jerry and Scott are two of my best friends, folks. They're two of my best friends. Scott Mattisall, Jerry Horgan, they are definitely in the running for the MVP. Molly Eichel wrote a great column about for me and Bob Levy, but you know what? She wrote about me twice in a year. She wrote about the Internet show, and she wrote about the radio show. So Molly Eichel will also be in the running for MVP. Then we have... There's three right there. Reverend Bob Levy, who worked hard with me to get the deal done to get his radio show on 1360 AM. So Reverend Bob Levy's in the running. There's four candidates for MVP. And then we have, let's see, we got Scott, Jerry, Molly, Bob, Dean Graziani. Dean Graziani, a great co-host again. And wait, there's more. How about the dirty twig? came on and gave us that hardcore style on the radio. Dirty twig. There's six MVP candidates. And you know what? There's a seventh. There is a seventh candidate for MVP. Jessica Reed. One appearance on the show, but she made an impact by spending hours and hours that night in the studio with us. There is seven MVP candidates right there. Seven of them. Who do you give it to? I'm, I'm so, I don't know who to give it to. Who do you give the MVP to out of 07? Do I flip a coin? I mean, seriously, do I pick a number and say, okay, that's the winner? Do I just pick a name out of the sky? Look, Jerry Horgan and Scott Mattisall are friends for a very long time. Been there throughout everything. I don't think they would win the MVP award. Reverend Bob Levy's a newcomer to it all. So, you know, Jessica Reed, a couple hours, like I said, yeah, did a great job and all. She did a super job on the tough conditions. Dean Graziani has got to be a guy that's got to be in it. He's got to be really – he could be considered the lead dog. It's a tough call. Who do you give the MVP to? I mean, seriously. I'm going to have to ponder that. I guess somebody – Somebody really got upset because they left and like, hell with this stuff. I, you know, they really bailed out that quick. You know, there's one person I forgot to mention. There's actually an eighth candidate in this thing. Mike Digital. We forgot about Mikey Digital. Made a surprising return. Called up and said, hey, you pulled it off. You made the Reverend Bob Levy appear on WNJC 1360. You spent the time and energy to make it happen. So 2014 for me, win, 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 folks. It's a winning year. That's what I got to say. It's a winning year. The MVP goes to, I still can't put it out there. I got to think about this one. You know, everybody gave it everything they had. You know what that shows? When you got seven people that you're considering for MVP, it shows that you had a winning team. That's what it shows. We had the winning team. The problem is we didn't have the time. But in 2015, that entire winning team is coming back to play. And let me tell you something. One year from now, we're going to be having the winning team gala. Not the winning team MVP vote. We're going to have the winning team gala. Because we have what it takes to make 2015 a wonderful year. Get ready because it's coming your way. Right here at Beer Man Network, BeerManNet.com, Ustream.tv, and a whole bunch of other places. It's going to get crazy in 2015, I promise you that. And with that being said, the MVP goes to Dean Graziani. That is our MVP winner, Dean Graziani. i put it out on Facebook right now live. Dean Graziani has just won the MVP. You know what? I decided to, you know what? This guy came up. Through, through thick and thread, D. Graziani saved the show late in the week one. Dean wins. He just won a 2014 MVP. It's official. There you go, folks. 
I have to give it to him. I said, I've known Scott for a long time. So, Dean will get it. Yep, that's who I'm giving it to. You know what? Dean brought a lot to the table in our shows. And that's it. You know what? Scott Mattisall, Jerry Horgan are loyal guys. But uh, Dean worked his butt off. He deserves it. And there you go, folks. There it is. It's official. So uh, I just made it official on Facebook. And uh, you know what? He deserves it. Dean worked hard. He came through when I needed him many times. He was there in studio several times. And uh, you know what? It's, it's, an, it's an easy decision here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. You know, Anthony Colorado was a guy who was an early MVP. For the first half of the year, he definitely would win the MVP. Unfortunately... In the second half, things just didn't go, you know, I mean, Anthony did a great job, and I really appreciate everything he did. He was a huge part of the show, but uh, on the Internet side of the show, this year it broke down, too. We did the Internet pretty much for the first half of the year. Then we moved over to WNJC to finish the year. And in 2015, we'll be back. I want to wish you all a happy new year. And uh, we're going to cut it right here. As our MVP winner, congratulations to Dean Graziani, who stepped up and was a huge, huge player for me as a co-host. And uh, special thanks to everybody who made the show happen. There you go. And I don't forget, Rising with the Reverend Bob Levy every Monday through Friday on 1360 WNJC. Visit Reverend or RevBobLevy.com and visit BeerManNet.com From all of us at the Beer Man Network, I am your beer man wishing you a happy, healthy, exciting 2015. Enjoy tomorrow night, New Year's Eve. Have a great time, y'all. And, uh, it's like that's gonna be a wrap here. So, 23 minutes plus the pregame show is where we're at. A grand total of one hour and 12 minutes of broadcasting here tonight. And uh, that's what you have. So enjoy it. And uh, I will see you back here in 2015. Take care. Spread the word. BeerManNet.com and the Beer Man Network is going to be huge in 2015. From the studios, I wish you all a great, great night. Happy New Year. <laughs>